for sure join the YouTube link. I feel like you've been given the YouTube link. Uh, there is this thing in general. There is this post which says YouTube link. So I urge you to open that. OK. And uh, let's see, it's about to become 10. And now first things first is. I will share my screen and you guys. I feel like we're going to run out of space here, so. Uh, would be awesome if somebody says. OK, uh, cool. Eh? So is my screen visible now? I am projecting four people on here, but just tell me if my screen is visible. OK. So mm, yes, I yes. cool, cool. Thank you. Screen is visible. You can start once we are live, I think. Sure. I'll just wait for that. Till then, everybody just keep looking at my screen. Enjoying the view. There is one. OK, we are live. We are live. OK, we are live. And so uh, let's start. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Aryan. I am a fifth year dual degree student in energy science, BTEC plus MTech. Uh, due to graduate this summer, so my LDAP might expire any minute. No, not really. We'll answer your doubts before it expires. OK, and we are here. OK, uh, so this is lecture zero. We will go over everything that is relevant about the course. OK. We will not cover any real course content today. Just some, you know, very small things that you should know and anybody attending the course should know. This video is being recorded. It's on YouTube. If you are not able to join on Teams, you should go to YouTube. If any of your friends are not able to join, you should go to YouTube. OK, there are questions being answered on Slido. You guys should have the link. Please check it. Please open the link. Please ask questions. We have people monitoring it the entire time the video is on. OK, so thank you for coming. So, also, I hope everyone's taking really good care of themselves. Coronavirus. Anybody remember that? So yeah, OK. Also, first thing I'll start with is one warning OK, that if you haven't set up Anaconda, OK, and say let's just say Anaconda or Collab. OK, if you set up anything else, we will not be able to answer IDE specific questions. Now, what is IDE? Uh, it can be any kind of text editor. Cool. It's just it's just that we do not have the manpower to handle 10 different ID questions. OK, I hope you guys understand. Let's begin. So let's begin with what this course is. OK, so this course, it started with the Facebook post. OK, so I'll just summarize it. Uh, three years back, I took a TSS that is a technical summer school uh, thing that was for Python. OK. Now that technical summer school had people from all backgrounds, some people who did not know programming, some people who knew programming. OK, and what that caused is it caused something of a disaster because well, some people knew programming, some people didn't. People who knew programming got bored. People who didn't know programming were not doing it appropriately because I was trying to cater to both the audiences. OK, so what we have done this year is we have limited this course to everybody who already know the basic concepts of programming. That is, they have done some sort of CS 101 kind of course, kind of course. OK. We do not want to teach course is not for you. OK, this course is probably not for you. You probably need to do something more basic before coming to this course. 
videos are recorded so it shouldn't be a problem following it later on okay so uh, being able to discuss things in detail is what we are doing with this course fine so you should know all the basic concepts already cool i hope it's clear with everybody uh, and obviously slido is open you can ask things there yeah let's go on so what are we doing here right so the first thing is that we want to show people that python is easy we know that people get intimidated by python because well it's a new programming language it's quite different from what they've seen and frankly it can be a little tough because for for beginners to learn because things are spread out all over the internet right so we want to show people that it is easy to learn through our course we will constantly draw parallels between python and c++ to make learning more intuitive people who have done c++ they should understand one of the one one of those codes and then they can start relating things right and that will make things very easy okay then getting people to tinker with libraries now what are libraries we'll get into that later but libraries is what truly unleashes the power of python okay so that's the that's the goal of this course that we want people to be able to unleash the full power of python cool and then we will try to help people build stuff you know make type make python useful to their particular domain somehow okay so we'll be doing that using the final project about which you might have read on the course web page if you don't know what the course web page is if you don't know what i'm talking about you should be reading the general channel more because we have posted it on the general channel before okay so please read it if you don't know cool now who should do this course someone who wants to learn python obviously and wants to get familiarized with whatever popular python libraries are there by popular i mean these these python libraries are used by a lot of people and we already uh, since we are all experienced in python we know what kind of things are used generally so we can teach you that and we know how to build like we just want to teach people how to build cool stuff and that's for rapid prototyping okay i'm just going to ignore that last one yeah okay this session is being uh, is being held by a few seniors okay you might have read about it so a few seniors we got together understood there was a problem and we are collaborating with wncc for this session okay so you should understand whatever you learn here it comes from an author authoritative uh, place Okay, so what we're telling you, it kind of comes from an authoritative place. Okay, so you can believe us. Okay, now, uh, what is Python? Okay, the first that sentence is pretty complicated. We'll try to break it down, short. So it's an interpreted, object-oriented, high-level, general-purpose programming language with dynamic sem semantics, built by this really smart guy called Guido Van Rossum, 1980s. What a crazy time, right? So uh, I'll explain this picture later, but yeah, this is relevant. It's just not that funny, but it's relevant. Okay, so uh, let's talk about these terms, right? So what does high level mean? High level simply means that, uh, well, it's like writing. So you everybody's heard of this thing, right? Like machines speak in zeros and ones right so people who know a programming language say c++ or something okay so that is one of the high level languages python is one such language which helps you write code in some sort of you know human understandable way and then python is you know uh, converted to machine code which is understandable by computers so that's the idea of a high level language interpreted well uh, you must have heard of the term compilation maybe i don't know uh, i feel like you would know that and uh, usually there are two kinds of languages some compiled and some interpreted so compiled languages are more like uh, you have a compiler like it's like a program okay uh, for c++ uh, there is this thing called gcc or c lang 
you don't have to worry about it okay i'm just throwing some terms at you but you don't have to worry about it basically you can compile so how you run c++ code is you compile it using the compiler you go to the file that's outputted and then you run it okay well in python uh, there is no such concept of compilation you directly run the program without compiling it and it is interpreted line by line okay so every time it is uh, just going through the lines and then it will give you a runtime error i hope you understand what a runtime error is it's an error that is hit when you have you know when it's running when the program is running that happens in c++ in some cases in python it's almost always the case it's not almost it's always the case okay so yeah so that's what interpreted means now object oriented is simply this thing that so uh, everything every variable in python is an object okay and it has properties it has methods object oriented programming oops you must have heard of it it's a huge concept we obviously cannot cover it okay we'll try to get a bit into it later but yeah it's it's something okay now uh, then there is this thing called dynamical typing okay so python what it does is uh, it doesn't have data types okay so you usually would expect something like an int here or a float here or something else here in c++ that is if you're using some other language you would expect something else but in python you don't have to write a data type you can just say a equal to some number or a equal to some string right or some floating point number or some double number if you've heard of the term double yeah and there is this thing called a list in python i don't want to get into it right now okay but this is a list it's like an array i know you should know what an array is because c++ right so it's similar to that kind of thing it's, well there are a few differences we are not getting into it right now but yeah what you can what you can infer from here is all of these lines they are setting the same variable to us to a different data type each time okay so how uh, python does this is it's it's intel intelligent enough okay it will keep running the code if it finds a new kind of thing a new kind of variable uh, being assigned to the current variable i mean a new kind of value being assigned to a current variable it will just go ahead and assign it it won't care fine and indentation okay uh, this thing it's pretty infamous uh, python is pretty infamous about it so you have indentations in python so you remember curly braces in c++ where you put like uh, where you define a function int main you put two put two brackets and then you open brace and you close brace we don't have brackets anymore if you want to put something in under something else you press enter and then you indent it okay usually indentation is say four characters you can set it to one tab also you can set it to other kinds of things also but we'll assume that you set it to tab okay so please indent with a tab not a space okay so there is this huge thing about spaces versus tabs you might have heard of it silicon valley some people watch that some people uh, would have heard of it just because so we i would prefer if you use used tabs instead of spaces because uh, it's easier to convert tabs to spaces than spaces to tabs okay i have no other reason some people say it's space but well i have no other reason to tell you that okay this is funny image about a python developer measuring the indentation because well you have to be con consistent okay now about python versions okay so there are two versions of python right so there is python 2 and python 3 now python 2 is archaic it's not used anymore we don't expect you to use it we don't want you to use it we want you to use python 3 okay uh 
every thing that you write now should be in Python 3. You can forget that you heard about Python 2. OK, uh, there will be some libraries, really old libraries that have not been updated or some other kind of legacy code that was written years back that was written in Python 2. OK, but uh, as such, you don't need it. All right, so make sure you're learning Python 3 and not Python 2. Anywhere you learn it from, be it here. Or if you want some other kind of resources, we have it on the course web page, obviously. I already talked about it, so you can check it there. All right, so yeah, I mean, that's what you can do. You always learn Python 3. Be careful, All right? Now uh, coming to, well, why Python? OK, it's very easy to pick up the basics, especially if you know another language. It's really easy to pick up the basics. You can make things really fast, especially with a lot of libraries. OK, then you have a lot of community support. Too many developers are using Python these days, all right? And then there are a lot of libraries. I actually kind of talked about it already. So yeah, lots of libraries doing everything you want basically everything you can think of okay so through this course you will learn about libraries by the way so you don't have to worry about it just yet all right cool let's go so about pros and cons uh, the first pro is that low level languages like say c or c plus plus or something else you can interface with them very easily uh, using Python. Basically, you can tell Python to go to C code and then come back from there, something like that. Okay, uh, I won't get into it. And it's dynamically typed. So if A was a floating point number, it can be a string, then it can be a list. Okay, so that's not a problem. Now, uh, cons are obviously speed. It is slow. And it's it's quite slow. Uh, yeah, it's it's really slow. That's that's what one, two, three mean. It's really slow. OK, so. Uh, just that don't hold this misconception that you can't use Python because it's slow. It is slow, but uh, for our purpose, things that will happen in. Say one second will happen in 0.9 seconds if you don't use Python, so just doesn't matter. Cool. OK. Now questions. Shoot. Do we have any questions here? Shubha? Or uh, uh, no. No. We have answered all questions. No problem. Okay, great. Cool. Thank you for that. And uh, I feel like uh, this is pretty nice. I hope things are going smoothly. If things are not going smoothly, you should actually you can post on Slido if things are not going smoothly. One of these people will unmute and tell me. Okay. So please, please do that. If you're not getting anything, okay, cool. Okay, I can't see you, see any of you, so I can't see you do anything like that. So, oops, uh, somebody is requesting control by mistake. Okay, anyway, let's continue. Yeah, so now we're going to see a few code snippets. Okay, so uh, the idea about putting this here is you're not going to learn anything, nothing huge. It's just that you want to get used to Python code. OK, only way to get used to it is to see it hundreds of times. All right, cool. So, uh, so there is something strange going on here, which I am going to ignore. <laughs> All right, let's start with the most basic program there is. OK, hello world. Everyone's done that at some point in their lives. If you've done a programming language, yeah. So how does it work in C++? You have you have to include the IO stream thing for outputting. You have to use a namespace called std to you know use C out. Okay. Then you have to make a class called int main because all code has to be in main for it to run. All right. And then you put a string message equal to hello world. Then you print it using C out. Well and good. OK. Now in Python. You do not need to input anything. Uh, sorry, don't need to import anything. 
any kind of library for the message. You can simply write a message, write the string here. OK, and then you can print. There is a mistake here that it should include string. I should. Fix this. Just in case. OK. I hope that is fine. Yeah, oh. so that's how you do it in C++. Sorry about that mistake. OK, and that's how you do it in Python. It's really simple. Just write message equal to string and then you print the string. OK, I am going slow because this is the first lecture. I cannot have people dropping out just because it was too fast. OK, you get used to Python code. We'll get we'll get quicker and quicker and quicker. OK. Cool. Okay. Let's go to factorials. Basic program. You have to define the function. Define a function in factor. It's itself multiplied. Pretty simple. OK, and then you print it. Very plain. Very underwhelming. This is C++. Python also underwhelming. Uh, this remains the same. X is equal to factorial 5. You call the function with a number and you. Defining the function slightly different. You have a def factorial. OK. So this line, I'll just talk about it. Have a def. Def is you are defining a function. OK, for any function in Python, you do not have a return type. Void or anything. You put a def. OK, you forget that it has a type. You do not care about it. OK. Def space. Factorial name that's similar. Open brackets. And there is a parameter list. Yeah, so here we have a parameter list which has only one parameter. OK, here we have a parameter list which has only one parameter, but now we don't need to add a type behind it. It's an int. This we do not add a type. We just put n. OK, it could have been n comma m or n comma j or n comma x if you wanted more, right? And if n is equal to equal to 0 or equal to equal to 1, return 1. Uh, and uh, if this statement is not executed, it will return n into factorial n minus 1. OK. Now. Uh, this statement I'll have to talk about. It has this thing called OR. You don't see it here. You see a double line here. OK. But Python is gracious enough to provide us with this keyword OR. There is also AND, AND and OR. There are some other keywords like this. OK, easily you can Google it and find out, but uh, it shouldn't matter right now. OK. Oh, one thing that I did not say earlier was that there are no semicolons. OK. So if you notice you need a semicolon and a lot of statements here, but here you don't need to put a semicolon. OK, except you need to put a colon here. OK, so what does a colon do? A colon says that the next line is supposed to be a tab ahead of this line. OK, so instead of the brace, you put a colon and the next line is one, two, three, four. Uh, spaces ahead and then you put your if you don't need to put a bracket around it you put equal to equal to or uh, equal to equal to and then you return something here no semicolon similarly you return something here no semicolon it's pretty similar except for semicolons and this colon and the space yeah and this if thing you don't really need brackets here OK, you can put brackets if that makes you feel comfortable. It doesn't matter. OK. Now Fibonacci series more of the same. 
if you don't remember Fibonacci series, this is what it looks like. E is equal to B plus C, and then you keep moving that. Okay. So yeah, uh, C plus plus code really simple. You put n equal to equal to zero, return zero, one. You term. This is the one term. Sorry, this is the second term, third term. That's how it goes. Okay. So zeroth term, first term, and if this is none of these, you have to return sum of. Okay. Another mistake. This should be fib. But it's all right. I can fix it. Just give me a second. Unlock it. Okay. Fix it. Yes, right. So uh, yeah, I mean you can put fib, and that's pretty simple. You, I hope everybody knows this, right? Same thing in Python. Another def, another uh, function name, one parameter. Okay. By the way, you can put x, oops, sorry, x, z, something like that. If you want more parameters, we don't. We want only one. If is still the same, it's like this. You put a semicolon here, and you return zero. Now, instead of else if, we have elif. Okay, so it's basically a contraction of this. It's nothing to worry about. Small change. Everything is exactly the same, just this. Okay, so uh, you're already learning something. I hope. Okay, even though this is not meant to teach you anything, I hope you're already learning something. Okay, I prefer to, you know, I prefer it if you guys would be following this code, you know, co like writing this code on your own and, you know, printing it out so that you get something, but it's okay. Uh, let's see now. Uh, everything's the same. You just return the sum. This is again a mistake. Sorry about that. New teachers. That's going to happen. Okay. But yeah. Cool. So this is really simple. Just this LF thing. That's what we introduced. Nothing else. Print is the same. Return is same. If is the same. Def is the same. Okay. Sorting. Well, sorting is in C++. Well, few people here would not know how to do this. I know why, because you, it's not always that you learn this library in C++ algorithm. But this is how you sort in C++. If you didn't know, welcome to the club of people who know. You define an array. You define an array size by doing size of x by size of x0. Okay, then you sort from x to x plus the length of the array, and then you print it, and then you return zero because that's the convention. Okay. Python, well, it's easier in the sense that now we have something called a list. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So a list can be put into something called this function, which is called the sorted function. OK, so this function is giving me the sorted version of X. All right, I'm saying please give me the sorted version of X. This gives me a sorted version of X in this variable and you print it. OK. Now some uh, major differences. It's a list. It's something new. It's not defined like this. OK. We didn't have to then uh, obviously no semicolon, whatever. Sorted function is different. Sort does it in place. I don't know if you remember what in place means, but basically it does it within the array. Sorted is not doing it within the array itself. OK, it's doing it in a new one that is sorted underscore X and it's printing it right. And uh, here printing takes a loop. Your print take does not take a loop. It's already defined. Then you print sorted X, it prints in the entire list. OK. Cool. It's very, very simple. It's just that you can print the list directly. That's one takeaway. Second takeaway is that. 
well there's this new thing called a list okay and third takeaway is that you can use sorted and it does not sort in place it sorts in a new variable cool okay this is sort of a call by value function pass by value function you guys remember pass by value pass by reference i hope you do c++ very basic yeah so pass by pass by value sort of and it gives you this so it's just it's just the same thing okay don't have to worry about it cool now if you're not yet convinced that python is something worth learning well this was really slow i hope this is not what it not that what unconvinced you so uh, yeah if you're not get convinced here's why you should learn python the first thing is this image the strange looking image is uh, of it's a screenshot of it's it's i'll tell you what this is okay this graph it basically it's a graph of number of questions versus which year we are talking about okay so in 2009 we had some x questions on language a b uh, y questions on language b something like that okay so languages are given here i think i should lock the page that's what's causing the problem yeah huh. so this is these are the languages given c sharp python javascript java php c++ assembly you must have heard of a few of them c++ one of them python is your okay so i want you to pay attention to one line i don't know if you can see this uh let's see maybe dark mode can help you better right so this green line which my pointer is at that is the python line okay and this is in terms of percentage okay so in 2009 four percent of the questions were on python now moving to 2020 that's up to 15 percent almost okay and that is huge you can imagine c sharp which was the most po popular language back in 2009 that was at 16 percent okay now python is almost at that level Okay, and the amount of volumes of questions that Stack Overflow might be getting these days is huge. Okay, so yeah, that's that's pretty. Uh, sorry, Aaron, to discuss. Yeah. Can you please zoom in the page because I'm asking for zooming in the page. Sure, man. Why not? Okay, now can you see that? Is this better? Is this better? Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So. Uh, green thing right green thing goes all up all the way that's what i was talking about and this red thing that was c sharp okay so c sharp back in the day was really popular i mean it's just 2009 but i like calling it back in the day okay and 2020 well python is up there sorry about that 15% okay by the way it's this really popular website where you can answer all your which where you can get all your coding doubts cleared it's not great for beginners as such for asking questions but when you google stuff you will find almost all your questions already answered on stack overflow almost all your questions okay so when in doubt you should just open google you know just do it how to get all attributes of an object in python first link this was so random i did not even think about this before this session okay sorry before this minute and the first link is stack overflow okay open that you see it people upload questions and downward questions too on stack overflow so beginner questions are usually downvoted like anything okay so you should first google instead of putting it on stack overflow okay yeah then there is one person who's answering nice nice lad here and then there, there are some uh people commenting on why that was wrong <laughs> okay so 
and then you can see that this is python 2.6 some some person wanted to ask questions on python 2.6 okay don't worry about python 2 worry about python 3 please okay but yeah this is something that you will be doing constantly in your coding journey okay google please google you can get stuff here everything is here i mean there are i have come across notes that are made out of stack overflow okay so yeah you should do this back to our lecture so here are a few big companies that use python you can see huge companies are using python huge companies and quora are using python I forget I said that. anyway so uh quora is oh man i have lots of things to say about it but not here anyway so uh yeah huge companies are uh, using python for a lot of things you know these people even have internal tools built on python you know google has internal huge internal tools built only on python okay so when people say it is slow it's just not it might not matter it's that's the slow we're talking about cool then uh, i mean uh, it's this is just something it's everywhere scientific computation image processing audio video based applications console based applications your xbox or ps4 or whatever then your desktop gui applications software web apps business applications everything man enterprise applications 3d cad i mean you can do anything in python okay only thing is that you have to learn this skill called googling right cool so uh maybe ooh, okay we came to this really quick right mid session break right so we are going to take a sample quiz so shubham uh can i have you say yeah. something right so hey shubham okay. uh okay. yeah okay just, guys, just so i'll be giving you just a minute, just a minute. Right. I hope everybody's downloaded the safe app. If you haven't downloaded the safe app, please go and download the safe app. Okay. I have given you the links. I posted it on the general channel. I know many of you haven't done it. Many of you don't intend to do it ever. Please do it. It helps you, helps us help you. Okay. Please, please. Over to Shubha. Okay, so uh, hi guys. So while you like some of you ha haven't installed safe, safe apps, you can continue installing them. Like I'll wait for a couple minutes before we actually start the quiz. So today's quiz does not even like have many uh, very many theoretical questions. This is just a sample quiz for you to get comfortable with the platform and for you to test out. So we have given a lot of uh, time even for the MCQ questions. You just have to uh, select whatever options you see fit. That there are no right or wrong answers for this quiz. Okay, so don't worry. Just attempt the quiz. It will probably not take you more than one minute, but you will have seven to eight minutes after you start the quiz. So I will put the password in the chat and will also write it on the screen. So the password will be displayed on the screen. Once you start the quiz, you will not be able to use your phone for anything else. Now that you will have to just quickly answer the questions and uh, just submit the quiz. Okay, if you have any questions, do post them on slide and we'll answer right away. There are only five questions, right? On the yep. safe app quiz. Yep. There are only five questions. I hope everybody can see them. No, not yet. <laughs> oh, no, no, uh, not yet, but I hope everybody would be able to see them. If you in answering the quiz. To the Slido. The about it is posted on Slido. Okay, we have intentionally not opened the typical uh, teams channel because i mean the last i checked and this was at eight o'clock there were only there were like 380 people okay and people registering is above 750 so so it's just not possible to open that let's use slido please okay so yeah uh, when is the quiz starting uh I'll... should i start now yeah let's let's, okay fine we can wait if somebody doesn't want us to start right now 
we frantic start posting on the teams i'll chat. go yeah. teams teams chat okay i might have to okay so the registration of the core uh, registration code should be in the email but we have also posted it in the chat so look at whatever is most convenient for you password i'll give the password for the quiz i'll let you know yeah we always have a password for the quiz so don't worry about it right now right uh, we are getting don't say yes start right <laughs> now say that i am not Patient. ready if you're not ready you tell us okay if you're ready that's very well good so there is no need to mark any attendance on safe the submission of your quiz will count towards your attendance no attendance right i hope you got that hope people are asking slido questions to i'll just uh, i'll uh, this down okay let's see i think okay guys uh, i'll be sharing the password now the quiz will run for the next 7 minutes so, so if you like uh, started within the next maybe 6 uh, minutes if you want to attempt all the questions let's i'll wait uh, can you scroll down a bit aryan passcode is on the screen oh Okay. What's the passcode? This is the passcode. AGL. This this is the passcode. AGL WX. This is the name of the quiz. Sorry for the confusion. Course name is PY. Python school clips. Okay, maybe we can make this orange or something. Yeah. I hope you guys are attempting the quiz. It's a simple quiz because it's not really a quiz. there are no right answers there are only answers you think are right that's until we discuss the question answer key you know i feel like i should lock this so about 350 people are either taking the quiz right now or have already submitted so whoever is lagging behind quickly start the quiz man i lock Page. If you finish your quiz, you are free to go to Slido and ask questions. Because why not, right? Uh, we are waiting. So I think we are waiting till ten fifty. Aryan, can you switch back? Switch back to the eight. light thing. No, the light. Oh, I'm so sorry. Just a minute. That's more preferred, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Listen. Let's switch to the dark screen because it felt easier. Have a quick peek at how many people are in the meeting. Okay. Three eighty two. Some it's dispelled. I hope. Okay, it's going up and down. Hopefully, it's just some people lying behind. I'll wait. So, if anybody has answered the quiz, feel free to tell me in the chat section. 
Okay, fine. I will switch off notifications on Teams. Good time to us that. Hi, Aaron. About uh, 370, like uh, 378 people have already submitted the quiz. So that's like almost uh, nine, more than 95% of the people here. So oh, we can yes. proceed slowly and the rest for lagging band can quickly complete that quiz. Okay, so I'll just start at 2245. How about that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. 2245, less than a minute remaining. You cannot, I, I don't think it will take you a lot of time. So it's fine. 2244 still. For still people who are downloading the app, there is a lot of time left. There are 5 minutes 30 seconds for you to open and submit the quiz. It's not a real quiz, but the thing is that you should mm -hmm. get accustomed to the safe app. Okay, 2245. Uh, maybe we can take a few Slido questions. Are there any Slido questions, Dikshant? Maybe are you monitoring Slido? Anybody who's monitoring Slido? Oh, uh, yeah, like I don't need to like uh, have more data. So there's no such big question over there. Okay, so, can... so either people are really understanding everything or uh, I mean or they're not understanding anything and I like to believe the first one so if you're not understanding anything maybe you can tell us in Slido that I'm not understanding anything yeah I mean uh, I mean I just it's just strange that we don't have any questions By the way, uh, lecture notes will be available to you after the session. Sorry, we can't do it right now because there are some things you would like to add, like, you know, a quiz should be a surprise. So, yeah. OK, 46, I am hoping that everybody has done stuff. If you haven't, please catch up. Please do this. OK. I will continue slowly, but uh, don't worry. It's not a lot. It's just logistics. You are getting the notes later on, so you can chill. OK, let's go. Uh, now, huge stuff. Course curriculum. These are expandable. I'm not going to expand them right now. We are going to do these many lectures, OK? So course curriculum is uh, we are starting with basics of Python 1, then basics of Python 2. Something about classes, very little. This is not about object oriented programming. We just want to give you a simple brief recap and how to do it in Python stuff. Libraries, how do you Google it and everything. Python standard library does a lot in Python. Uh, Everybody should know because it will help you read programs in Python. OK, it's just about that. It's not that you will. I'll just open this up. OK, it's, for example, it's math. OK, you might not remember everything under math. Right, but if you read it somewhere, you'll feel like you'll connect it from something else and then you can Google it and then you can get the entire picture. One thing about Python is you cannot remember what you are taught. OK. You ultimately have to refer to things to write even the smallest pieces of code. Yeah, don't have to worry about it. You will need Google from time to time. There is something called a Python documentation, which is awesome. I really like it. Everybody should read it. See. Right, and then uh, by the way, there is something called this uh, something called development pre release tables. Okay, so usually you should download the latest stable release. Okay, so Python 3.9 is stable. If you get Python 3.9 point something, that is also stable. Don't worry about it. Okay. So if there is something that just, just say this is 3.10, that's 
it is in pre-release it's not recommended that you download this or this okay so yeah i mean this is a really good resource it has everything about everything i want to show you something really small maybe come here by the standard library we'll talk about this but let's just say built-in types right so let's go to numeric types you know numeric types so this is a web page so it scrolls to numeric types when you click on it and yeah i mean you get a whole list of things their explanations it's really easy you know and if there is something more to this function you can just click on this find the whole documentation of abs returns the absolute value and whatever 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 something's written i'm not going to explain it it's just a demo just showing you things okay so these are really really important you know documentation is what makes things easier to read this is what the, this is the first tutorial for anything any language any software is the documentation okay every other tutorial is just a derivative of this tutorial cool anyway uh, we were on course curriculum python standard library right so uh, this plus this this is first week this plus this this is second week this plus this third week this plus this fourth week okay now uh, about the freshers okay what we believe is up until this point i think you should follow the course right but later on around this time you're going to get clashes with your ensems you're not going to be able to do the project okay so these things will it will impact your learning it's it's not possible to get a certificate without doing the project okay so i urge you to stick for at least these many classes and then maybe you can proceed to another resource for example we have this thing called the technical summer school okay i complained about it in the very beginning it's come a long way since then it's really good now okay so when whenever you have your summers i'm talking about freshers okay whenever you have your summers uh, btech freshers i'm sorry uh, so whenever you have your summers you're going to have this uh, uh, technical summer school running by wncc okay it will have some things like machine learning it might have it not have depends i'm not sure okay, i don't remember frankly there are going to be few things there are going to be some python for some applications okay so it is best that you attend these classes and then you can you know stay out of the course for the rest of the time cool i'm not telling you not to use cfab just because you're not just because attendance is not important for you it is still important for you if you don't understand something in one of the one of the lectures for example i didn't understand tuples you ask on slido you we will have questions on safe app which tell us if you understood or not so please please use safe app okay cool i think this is something people wanted to clear but yeah uh that's course curriculum now course schedule four weeks where we have two lectures plus one tutorial this is every week okay lectures monday and thursday at 10 pm tutorial saturday at 10 pm this is starting from lecture 1 lecture 0 which is this one obviously saturday 10 pm we did this early before the actual lectures because we want you guys to figure out for yourselves if this course is for you or how much of this course is for you okay obviously you're getting this web page and every other web page in the future don't worry if you're not able to attend this recordings are there this thing is there everything is there okay don't worry if you have questions you can ask us uh, you can ask wncc right this is what they want to do they will want you to come to them they want you to ask them questions they want to clear, clarify these for you okay obviously before asking questions google is your friend always okay you can ask this person something a lot not just something a lot i i get my doubts cleared by google so 
you can trust it. well most of it okay now the tutorial lecture schedule today's lecture zero and so on and so on monday tuesday we just put the dates for your convenience we've put some timings this is indicative if it usually goes past this timing because of doubts problems something okay for example today it might go slightly above or it might not i'm not sure let's see okay but yeah i mean we've put indicative timings okay oh by the way tutorials right so tutorials uh, there is something that i wanted to tell you about it uh, i'm not sure if it's here or it's there later but tutorials are not like your typical tutorials these are more like guided projects. These will be very small projects that you should do in order to gain a better understanding of what was covered in this week. Okay, the, these will not be your typical tutorials. Uh, usually we will ask you to do some problem, solve something for yourself. Come to the session, learn our way of solving the same thing. Okay, you know, we'll have really, really, we'll try to have the smallest uh, tutorial batches we can because we want discussion not a question answer session more like 10 people discussing what they did this week you know so if you have see a thursday class at 10 pm okay so to attempt the tutorial okay it's just one usually it's just one question of building something only way to start building something is being forced to build something. Okay, so we're going to force to force you to build something. If you're not able to do it, obviously you can come to the tutorial and learn how to do it. You have to come to the tutorial with your doubts, questions, everything. Okay, I attempted this, but it did not work. Attempted this did not work. This is how we learn. You know, we are making small, small communities within ourselves within the course so that this builds up to a larger thing in the future. OK. okay. Don't have to stress about it. OK, we we uh, wait. Uh, I am OK. Yeah, fine. It's fine. Uh, I think I already. Yeah, we already talked about all of this, whatever the course curriculum is. I'll just tell you quickly that NumPy and Matplotlib NumPy is just a computation library it makes your computation quicker. Matplotlib is just a plotting library, allows you to plot data, lots of options, lots of things, lots of things to learn to make effective plots in that. Pandas plus Seaborn. Seaborn is a another kind of plotting library. Only thing it it's becoming popular now because Seaborn looks pretty great. Okay, Seaborn plots. So yeah, it's pretty easy and looks pretty great. And about pandas, it's it's used for manipulating data. Okay. This is not a machine learning course. I think I said that. Don't want you to think of it like that. Okay. Please don't come with that assumption. This tells you a lot about Python itself. These things maybe help you do machine learning at some point, but it's really not necessary. So yeah, I mean, these are the ones which are important. Okay. We teach you a lot in NumPy, but it doesn't mean we remember a lot in NumPy. Okay. Even we Google it till today, so don't worry about it. Yeah. Now moving and then this last session will be about. Python applications, OK, so we have people from everywhere. You know, remember all all of us are from different fields, lots of experience. We'll tell you what we did here. OK, we'll talk about our work, what we do, why we do it. Cool cool packages to check out. It's just it's just something I'm not telling you to do it right now sometime in the future. OK, hope this is clear. Course logistics instruction is via lectures. This is one of the lectures you, we will. We constantly answering your doubts on Slido. Probably uh, we'll figure it out as the course progresses, but right now safe app Slido is what we're using for questions. We have recordings. This this lecture is being recorded as and when we, I'm doing it. We have discussions which are in the tutorials and otherwise too. Okay, 
Don't worry about it. Usually you receive the team's code on registration. Yeah, uh, last few people we just uh, pulled you into the team because uh, we were not sure if you would be able to check your mail and everything like that. But we we send emails to everybody. Okay, some people might get two emails. Sorry about that. But we are trying to send emails to everybody. That's why some people get duplicate emails. Sorry. Okay. Better to attend real time because your questions are being answered in real time. Yeah. And yeah, the, your code is without a doubt the worst I've ever run, but it does run. So uh, you remember that, right? You're getting this page later. It's about registration. Just helps us keep track how many people are there. There's a strict deadline. Please, please, please follow this deadline. OK. You should the legit way of getting into this course is registration. OK. We can't certify you without registration. So if you just come into the team, right? You don't register. Nothing is being tracked for you. OK, the safe quiz that you did right now. We won't be able to track it because we'll be telling it with the registration and it just won't show up in our data. So please register. Yeah, don't just join the team. OK, unless you want to maybe not get the certificate. So yeah, that's cool. It's OK. Anyway, lectures, you know that we are going to have live coding in the lectures. What could possibly go wrong? Obviously. Tutorials, many projects are there it's Saturday. OK, lots of stuff you can just read it. OK, it's not not I can not much I can say here except for. Uh, the fact that I just want to iterate this, reiterate this. You want to you need to work out these mini projects on your own. OK, OK. Uh, I hope this is fine. Uh, if you have some suggestions for us. We might have a suggestions form OK sometime later in the course because we believe that feedback during the course is more important than feedback after the course. Cool. So yeah, and then tutorial batches will be out by Tuesday. Saturday is the tutorial. Don't have to worry about it. But Tuesday because we feel that some people will drop out of the course because they didn't realize that we needed programming knowledge beforehand. Some people will drop out because it's not convenient for them. You know, things happen. It's OK. Some people have more like some people just don't want to continue. It's fine. You have we have the recordings up and available. You can follow them. Don't worry about it. But yeah. This is about it. Project, right? So this is an important part of your curriculum. OK, the last two weeks. It's simply dedicated to your project. OK. It's a six week course. Uh, we were really not sure whether to make it five or six, but we feel that projects have to be worked in two weeks because in one week people would have some inconveniences, right? Users Saturday Sundays because those those of you are not freshers in BTEC. You guys have your summer. Take out time. Learn Python. Ask us doubts. We are putting it into batches for a good reason so that you can keep asking your doubts so that it's more informal. You know, we'll try to put a gap between the tutorial person who's taking the tutorial and people who are attending the tutorial. We'll make it really small so that, you know, it's like just your seniors. So it becomes more informal that way. We are putting all these efforts for you. We expect that you reciprocate by putting in effort into the course. OK, yeah. Certification 60% attendance plus final project. OK. Questions At this point, you might have a few questions that you want addressed. Uh, Shubham or Dikshant, either of you, maybe Dikshant because it's easier for you. Probably. Anyway, Shubham. Yeah, so uh, most of the questions were about uh, dealing with installation or what's going forward in the post. So all of those have been answered. Okay, fine. Yeah, about installation, I'll still address it. If some some people were not looking at the Slido, please install Anaconda. I mean, we are here, but I'll just like go back up uh, here. Some and people, you. yeah, continue. Yeah, so if you haven't set up Anaconda or Collab, okay, we can debug Python code for you. 
but we cannot debug your problems with the ID. OK, so if you have say VS code or something else, we cannot teach you how to run the program in that. You have to look it up yourself on Google. Why? Because there are too many IDs. It takes up a lot of time on our part to answer these questions. Simply not worth it. We want to unite everybody. Uh, point of Anaconda is the setup is really easy. It's quick. Well, it's not about quick, but it's easy. Everything you need for the course comes in Anaconda. Same thing for Colab. Only thing dealing with files in Colab is a bit tricky. I suggest everybody does Anaconda. I personally don't really like Anaconda because uh, I think it's there are a lot of packages that I don't need. But uh, for beginners, Anaconda is beautiful. Okay, it's beautiful, really. I mean, I don't say it about a lot of things. So, yeah. Collab, it is similar. Only problem being that Collab, there can be some issues like the Collab instances, they keep disconnecting. Okay. If you don't, if you're, if you keep it idle for too long, you'll have to run the notebook again. So basically, both of these setups, they're going to give you something called a Jupyter notebook. Okay. Now setup, we have provided to, provided it to you on the course web page. Uh, please look it up. Go to the course web page, scroll all the way down. There is setup resources. Click on it. You you'll find instructions how to install or set up anything. Okay. We'll try to talk about collab. Yeah. Uh, just a clarification. So, uh, yeah. Collab and uh, Jupyter are types of IPython notebooks. So, Jupyter is a type of IPython notebook, and so is Collab. Also, another thing uh, about the question, there were quite a few questions about the projects. So can you uh, tell them a bit about what kind of uh, what, like topics uh, they can do or like how do they go about choosing the topic? OK, so uh, a really good idea. Uh, so those are some really good questions, first of all. So really good idea about projects. Well, uh, we are teaching you libraries, OK? So uh, people who have some domain say I have read few people's motivations. Well, I've read a lot of motivations. Some people gave us really weird motivations. Some people gave us really great motivations. Some people said that they want to uh, analyze data for their PhD thesis, right? That is awesome. I think you should do that as a project. This way you get mentorship for your for your work. You are actually finishing off your own work. We don't want you to do faltu me extra. This is that just does not make sense. You do things that you need doing. OK, so people who have uh, the relevant stuff like this, like a thesis or something which needs Python, you do that. If you have some specific field which needs Python, you you do some project in that, whatever is relevant. OK, others who don't have this, we will post suitable projects in due time. OK, uh, why we don't want to tell you right now is because we're not sure how much the class will pick up as we go and as we move along. OK, it's possible that some sex, some sessions may get extended or overflow into the next session. OK, it's possible because people don't understand everything. It's just not possible to understand everything in a lecture. OK, so yeah, we'll give you a good idea in the coming weeks, maybe two weeks from now. OK. But uh, uh, it's I think it's safe to say that you can look for your project partners. You can make teams of four up to four. OK, you can do it alone. We don't want to stop you, but I feel like if you do it in teams of four, you will be able to make something great, something that is appropriate for this course and uh, for your own self. You know, you are able to build something huge. Okay? If you have friends, uh, you can make them come here. Tell them people are going to be, you know, people are going to mentor them. Great course. You can give a good feedback. Thanks for that, by the way. You can do all kinds of things. OK, I'm just giving you ideas. Really good idea for final project will come after two weeks. Okay, Just make teams of up to four. OK, uh, it's better if you team up because it reduces the load on us. Okay. By the way, submission of your code will be on GitHub. 
we might get into it in your project days we have nothing planned okay during the last two weeks we have nothing planned we've written we've basically written it up till here right after this we are willing to go into you know specific doubt solving you know make it better make it more a larger group a larger more mature group which can answer each other's doubts sort of okay and then we can discuss your project we can discuss github we can discuss other useful utilities slowly but i mean we try to control it so that python is the main objective here okay yeah so your submission will be through a github repository and one page write up why we need one page write up is because we want to understand what you did just it's simpler that way we are not going to kill you if you don't write a great write up but it's about best to write a great write up so that you understand what you're doing okay it's just you just understand you just put down your understanding you'll have a better understanding of your own project once you start writing cool okay now questions i hope were answered and we can pause if you want but i'll just continue we'll we'll continue later so aryan 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 one yeah. second yeah so there is okay. another common question that is uh, come up so i just want to address that so this is by most of the people most of the freshers who are posting mm -hmm. this question that uh, you know they would have their end sem sometime in the middle mm -hmm. so so there are multiple questions based on that so all i would like to comment on that is that there is absolutely no pressure on you to meet the attendance requirement because the wncc would also be conducting a session that would get out to your needs in the summer so only if you feel like you can manage it there is absolutely no pressure from our side there are going to be other events other opportunities also for you yeah. so please do not take any load on yourself and uh, if you can still meet 60% without compromising on your academics then we are not going to stop you from doing that but please there is no uh, pressure from our side to Okay. Uh, so as seniors in IIT Bombay, we feel that end semesters are ten times more uh, important than this course. Okay. So if you have to choose between those two things, magnitude of that is ten times more than this. Okay. End sems, exams. This is what matters. These things can be done in summers. They can be done on your own time later on. opportunities like tss are coming okay wncc does it they are collaborating with us here they have a lot of resources we have they'll try to be little more basic they'll help you out okay don't worry it's there are always opportunities for people who are looking for them okay look for them go to wncc try it cool now the pycg team or python school kids team for 2021 this is us Uh, we wanted to jot down our motivations so that you understand why we are here okay so this is me i'll just go over mine uh, wanted to fix a wrong the tss thing was the first thing i opened with the facebook post that i told you about and i think if you know a programming language already python should not be intimidating okay and i think a lot of people are intimidated by it so yeah this is i don't think it's a great assumption that python is difficult if i know some programming language python is difficult this is my this is why i came here now shubham that i kept referring to he said that he found it versatile lipkitas beautiful he's he really wants to induct people into his cult okay then uh, aditya is plus one in me he agrees with what i'm saying plus he loves python Vedant, okay, he wants to bang on, bang his fist on the table. Say there must be a better way. <laughs> okay, probably referring to the course. Okay, Dikshan, that I kept referring to, he wants to pass on knowledge. Latika, our ex WNCC manager, or oh, secretary, sorry. Oh, she wants to show people what an exciting world coding is. Aaron. Oh, one of us, one of our really enthusiastic seniors in his fourth year, he says he had some really big difficulties in learning Python, and that was after he learned C++. And he wants to be one of those, you know, who makes this path easier. You know, and Devyanshi, this coders together strong. K, 
okay that's shruti saying she's she's the wncc uh, secretary right now shruti is uh, the wncc manager right now she says after doing c++ python seemed very easy very fun and yes coders together strong it's, it's it's one thing that wncc people keep saying then lisa enthusiastic she is in her sophomore year going to her third year she is uh, she wants to she finds some things really cool and she wants people help, she wants to help people ishan also sophie going to third year he learned for mldl faced too much difficulty he loves loves this course tejal she started learning python because she wanted to do open cv open cv is an image processing uh, library so she wanted to do that and now it's her language of choice she's also so for more going to third year shubham says this really awesome thing about saps those friends which you call sap and then you know it's the only snake that can help you so good one shubham harshit was rather conservative about his motivation till the very end <laughs> so he said i'm motivated but he'll just take him a while to say it out loud rasha because python is cool parts says cuz he thinks the real life problems can be solved to share easy language mldl dev he does everything abhishek says enthusiast is enthusiastic about coding wants to keep the coding culture alive okay so the theme here that you notice is everybody face some sort of difficulty okay you know i mean all of these people they face some sort of difficulty and we want to make it easier right we are here to do that we know typical courses don't make it easier because they no, do not offer feedback right so we want you to know that we are here to listen to you if you don't tell us what's going on you are not going to find it out by any means okay we'll keep floating forms we'll keep asking you questions we'll keep telling you clear it clear it out okay because it matters right it will be incorporated into the course as much as it can okay by the way a few people that i didn't talk about this guy uh latika going to fourth year this guy is going to fourth year this guy is going to uh, uh vedant is going to uh, graduate he's in his fourth year right now he's about to graduate the th- third year he's the damco of mech he's about to go to his fourth year shubham to shubham is also about to go to his fourth year he was the ex saki for uh, erc electronics and robotics club finally me i'm a fifth year i'm about to graduate very soon it's the summer uh, no many things to look forward to so yeah a lot of us are like really old i guess a lot of us are really young really old both both ways but yeah does that okay so we are here we are motivated we want you to understand coding understand python please ask us questions okay finally some references and time for a bit of live coding wait uh, before we go to live coding any doubts please uh, shubham or dikshant or whoever Um, no oh, no major doubts this is going really well i have to say you guys are putting up with a lot of slow stuff because because it's all me i'm so sorry we'll be faster next time okay so now let's go to some live coding right uh, we talked about anaconda a lot now let's uh, okay the way to open anaconda on this is on ubuntu so i use ubuntu as my os of choice okay so when you type anaconda navigator after you, after you install anaconda and you type anaconda navigator here it opens the anaconda program it's called anaconda navigator this is what it looks like okay i hope everything everybody uh, this is visible not sure if i can this is the largest text it can accommodate i'm sorry about that 
and see if I can increase the font size. Uh, really quick, really quick. It's not working. Something strange. Uh, I'm not sure what's the problem, but uh, OK, anyway. Uh, I'm so sorry for the small font size. OK, I will try to explain what's going on. Yeah. So Anaconda is this huge package. OK, it has a lot of stuff and uh, it can honestly take some time to understand what Anaconda is doing. OK, we will not be very thorough with it. We'll try to be really basic with it. OK. Anaconda Navigator, you have applications on. OK. Let's begin with that. Okay. So if you look at this, uh, it's basically your environment. Okay. Your environment is base right now. Right now the base channel is activated. OK, you can make more environments. Through here. Where you can, you know, create more environments. Type a name. Type of, uh, well, I guess. Let me see. This is what? This is hello world. See if I can. I don't know. I don't know why it's not working. But usually you can make a, make a new environment here. It's very easy. I, I guess there's some problem on my PC. OK, but what I really want you to see here is this. Lots of apps which we are not going to use, but this is something we are going to use. OK. Jupyter Notebook, we've been talking about it so long. I can't remember the last time I shut up about it, right? There is PyCharm, there is other stuff. People kept talking about it. Please don't use PyCharm, please use Jupyter Notebook. One reason and one reason only, we can't debug for every other ID. You can use any other ID, but we cannot debug for it. OK, cool. You can debug Python code, you cannot debug an ID. You know when you have to debug an ID, you have to like get into some details about it. That's that's problematic. We clicked on launch. This is how it should open. It should it should open in your default browser, right? And I'm just gonna. So this is this is where I wanted it to open. Uh, I could have gone into some folder, but it's fine. Uh, let's see. I can browse the file system through this, you know. So I opened it here. I opened the Python notebook on my home directory. This is what the home directory looks like on Ubuntu. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Basically, you can see your files here. Okay. It's probably open opening in documents or something for you. Okay. I'm just gonna seek. Uh, sorry, uh, by seeking I mean go. I'm just going to seek to the directory which I feel like opening. Uh, let's see, PYCK. I made a directory for this course. Okay, no notebook here. First thing, new notebook. Okay, there are other things, but we make a notebook. Python 3. I clicked on it. Should open a new tab. We'll wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, so this is the Jupyter notebook. Okay. We've been hyping it up for too too long now. OK, we can rename it. Let's rename it. Let's say hello. F first thing. Oh, this is what lecture zero of PYCK 2021. Yeah. Uh, Jupyter Notebook keeps auto saving. It will keep showing you the la keep showing you the last checkpoint where it's saved. So if you close it, it will be it will have already saved it to the last checkpoint. OK. Now uh, where do you write code? You write code here. OK. But before writing code, I want to show you some small things. Here there is another option to do a new notebook. Make a copy, save and checkpoint. So if you do control S, it's given here control S. You can save here. OK. Simple stuff. You can download this as something else. You can basically you can make it a, in a different format like a PDF very easily. You know, so there is look, there is PDF or something. There's Markdown. There are some things which we won't get into, but yeah. You can go to checkpoints. You're going to save checkpoints, right? You can go to the last checkpoint. 
then there is some stuff about cells. The good thing about Jupyter Notebooks is uh, there are a lot of shortcuts that are useful. OK, let's start with writing hello world. So X or oh, no, message is equal to. Hello world. Or. Why, why do it this way? You can also put a single. This thing on Python. Then I do so there are two ways to execute a cell. OK, so there is. It shows so it shows it to you here. I prefer to use these shortcuts. I clicked here. I pressed control. I pressed enter. And it ran when it runs. It shows you a number here. OK. So what this number means is this is the number of this is. Uh, so basically every time you execute it increases the number. I'm going to press control enter again. It's two now because it's the second time that we have done something. OK, now let's add a few cells. Let's go here. There's a plus cell. If you hover over it, you will see insert cell below. Oh, OK, so then you say print message and then control enter. This is three because this is the third cell to be activated. You do. Uh, message is equal to PYCK is awesome, right? And then let's try to print this message, right? And just to show you some stuff, maybe I can change the type. Message is equal to five, and I can print the message. Prints five. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Okay. Now if I run this again, this was the last run cell. It was seven. If I run this again, it's eight. OK, and it will print message. So it will print the latest value of message. Latest value of message was set where? It was set here. Message equal to five, right? And then if you print, if you run this statement, it will print that message. Yeah, so be mindful of what you're doing in a notebook, right? So if you are going to randomly run things like here and then you're going to run here. This is a save wire. I mean, I hate this. I absolutely hate this. This is not how things are supposed to work. Yeah, you don't want it to work that way. Right, and if this thing gets really messy, you can just go to kernel and you can say. Restart and clear output. Restart and clear. Output. All of this goes to nothing. There are no executions in the system at this point. Then you can run it pretty simply. OK, so now uh, I told you control enter. The first one here I told you control enter. Maybe I can. Yeah, there is shift enter. OK, so if you click on this, you press shift enter. It runs it and goes automatically to the next one. OK, so it's pretty common to like mindlessly press shift enter. Pretty common. Yeah, I mean I do it all the time. Then uh, run all, right? Run all. Starts running everything from start to big start to the end. Since these are empty, it will not run anything here. But yeah, these are these will also be run if you write something in this some code. Then there is restart and run all. It sets everything to zero, and then it starts running things. Okay. Now if you were there. A couple of so if you were paying attention for a couple of seconds, you would have seen a star in one of these, you know, and when you when do you see a star, you see a star when the cell is still running. Right, so you see a star some some places. OK, let's OK, let's try to recap a very few small things that we did in this lecture. Really, really small things. I'll go all the way up. Right, say C plus plus is Python. Let's just do this. Let's do this. No, sorry. Let's do Fibonacci series. OK, I want to show you what if looks like. Let's go there. Yeah, so what what do we do in Fibonacci? We do first we define a function. Fib. OK, and it takes one. One variable, right? Then you put this really important thing. It's called colon. 
press enter when you put a colon this thing is smart enough to put you four spaces in front okay and it put you here then you can start writing uh, what's the code for this if n is equal to equal to 0 return 0 l if n equal to, equal to 1 turn 1 oops c plus plus habits i start putting a semicolon at the end of everything not necessary you shouldn't put it actually it's not just not necessary it's shouldn't be that and uh, else you return what you return n into fib of n minus 1 now some of you some really smart people will remember that i don't have a return statement here you know it does not matter okay uh, python will not give you an error because it's an interpreted language remember so when this so if i if i make this mistake where there is nothing coming out of the function doesn't matter it's not expecting you to give something right if there is uh, i mean i'll i'll get into it later again so maybe in 5 minutes so if you just run this your function is running a uh, function is being uh, a function is running now okay so now what happened in your system this fib function got saved right that's all that happened here when it ran now if i do fib5 it's 120 this is probably wrong <laughs> because i did not do the right thing here it's fib and minus 2 i wish somebody told me that no Sorry, sorry about that. Now, if I did fib5, it did not run the right thing. If I do this, now it ran the right thing. Now, if I do fib5, it's fine. That's the right one, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, I mean, I didn't make that mistake intentionally, but I'm going to say that later on. I made this mistake intentionally. Okay. Uh, another really stupid thing to do, let's do just one print statement. How's that? Print it. Right. Let's call it. Let's just call it fib again. You know, let's run it. So now the fib has a new definition. It's in the system. The system that I'm talking about, it's called a kernel, by the way. Uh, for a Jupyter notebook, it's called a kernel. So when you say restart kernel, it restarts the system, and therefore all your variables are cleared. There is no variable in the system anymore. Right? I ran this last, then I'll run this again. Oh, maybe I can run. Yeah, it runs nine. It gives me nine. Fibonacci number, uh, ninth Fibonacci number is not this. Ninth Fibonacci number is 34, right? So this was a demonstration of some really simple things. Maybe I'll pick up one last thing here. Yeah, sorting, right? This thing, we have this code. We can just copy paste it. So I don't want to write it all over again. Things are going slow. You can put this in a new line. Okay. What I love to do personally is li I like to split things into lines. Okay. And I do this very logically. There's no method to this. There's no real method to this. It's just my logic. If I'm defining three lists here, say, oh, and I'm defining another list here. Okay, I run this. Oops, I forgot to put a comma here. It gave me an invalid syntax because it ran it all the way there. And so, oh man, it's nothing there. Then, if you run it, valid syntax, this is valid. Now, I try to run sorted x. It's giving me this, and you try to print sort x. Okay. There are some subtleties in Jupyter Notebook. If you just type sorted x, this is the name of a variable. You're not printing it. Okay. If you just type it, it will still still print it. Okay. But if you try to print something else, say let's just try printing y. Y is printing fine. Sorted x is printing fine. But if you try to print two things like this, only y gets printed. Okay. This is some subtlety of Jupyter Notebook. You know, this is something that you come across, some error that you come across two years from now, right? I just told you that so soon. But yeah, I mean, 
this is how things work in a Jupyter notebook. If I want both of this, these things to show up, I should do. Yeah, both of these things show up. Okay. By the way, print statement, as you may have noticed, pushes things to the next line. Right. Okay. Now, just a clarification, guys. Uh, like here, we are just uh, discussing like how uh, giving you an overview of how the Jupyter notebook works. You are not expected to understand all this code. We will discuss it in detail later. How functions work. How uh, the list will work in the next session. Yeah, like yeah. almost at the end of our time, so we'll wrap up soon. Yeah. Okay. So we are near near ending five minutes from that. This was just to show you how little you know, but how much you will know later. Okay. Save this notebook. Then when I'm closing it, I will go here. I close and hold. It said no kernel, and then later on I open it. It'll lot. It'll give me all these numbers and this these this code that I've already written. Okay. Because I had saved it. I saved it. Here. Skillet. Checkpoint created means it's saved. This thing is also showing that it got saved. Cool. Now close and halt again. It's gone. Now what about this? Quit it. You have shut down Jupyter. You can now close this tab. You use Jupyter again. You'll need to relaunch it. Okay. Close this. Right. All the way down. Oops, uh, close this too. Close Anaconda. Go all the way down. This is the end of the session. Congratulations on making it. I'm sure the number of people has turned to half because of how slow it's going. I'm sorry. I need to go, so go that slow. It's just the limitation of the times. Okay. Now we will be fielding some really quick questions. Well, okay. Uh, now, there are lots of questions being answered and asked. Guys, any questions? Anything? Okay, you have four minutes, four minutes to ask something that you were dying to ask, but were not able to ask. Okay, I closed it. I'm not monitoring it. Waiting for you to ask me something. You know, as a bonus, uh, okay, if somebody has a question, you can raise your hand. I'll pick one person, just one person, tell them to speak. Okay, just because, you know, does anybody have a question? You can raise your hand. I hope raising your hand puts you all the way. Just, just, just to clarify, please don't spam chat. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. We'll try to cover a few of them. Right. Teams etiquette, we like to call it. Right. So we are here. If you 